In my last episode, I talked to you about how to use the color mixer in Lightroom, something somebody pointed out to me I should have used when editing a specific photograph, and they were right. Hi, my name's Thomas Mitchell. I'm a professional nature photographer based out of the state of Utah in the USA. I love all things outdoors and photography, and if you'd like to learn more, click the subscribe button and follow me on all my adventures. When I posted that video, one of my subscribers commented. He said, now with point color, I'm curious which one you would prefer. I didn't even know about point color. I was totally lost. This is my reply. Dude, I'm so far behind on keeping up with changes Adobe keeps making. I didn't even know about point color. Thank you so much for asking about it. I just watched this video and now I have to play with it. I think for the image I edited in my video, I would use the color mixer. But I could see so many things point color can fix. Yeah, I, I didn't even know about point color. I think Adobe came out with that in that newest update back in November. And <laughs> I'm an old dog, man. I just have a hard time keeping up with some of this stuff. But it really, really works well. I played with that and I really like it. Let me show you what it does. So here I am in Lightroom and I've created this color palette to show you. If you scroll down and you go down to the color mixer, here's the mixer right here that I showed you about last time. Well, the tab right next to it is point color. Hello, McFly. And then you use the eyedropper and you select the color that you want to change. Down here, if you scroll down to the sliders, you can control how much of this of the shade of that it's going to change let me scroll these all the way out on both sides so you can see here the dot is showing the specific color i've selected but if i slide those sliders out in the ranges now if i do say hue or let's do saturation now if i do saturation it's changing everything on that palette not just the one I selected and by default it's typically spread all the way out like that to where all of the shade of that is going to be affected now if I take and I crank this range in and I bring it right in just to that specific yellow that I was pinpointing and I do it on all of these I'm going to do one on hue range and saturation and everything. Just zero that in there. Now, if I do hue shift, it's only changing that yellow that I sampled. Look at that. If I change the luminance, it's only changing the luminance of that specific color so let me show you an image that i had already edited that i really wasn't happy with and i decided to re-edit with this and with using the masks in lightroom instead of doing anything in photoshop this was from my zion national park trip that i did in november and i had this file right here that i decided to edit you can see it's pretty high dynamic range the highlights in the back are blowing out and the shadows are really clipping if I come in here to develop you can really see that and I I played with it and I liked what I got but it could have been better so a presentation I did recently to a camera club I used this as, a, as an example of of extremes and of editing and somebody asked me in the question and answers of that why I didn't bracket that image, which was a really good question. I told him at the time I was playing around with the dynamic range of my camera and just seeing what it could do. But I got looking back at that shoot and I realized that I had this underexposed in, uh, file that I had shot where I shot that at one fifth of a second. And then this was the one I had actually used, I believe, which I shot at 
at 0.6 of a second. So what I did in Lightroom was you, you click both of those, right click on the mouse, and then I came over to Photo Merge and did HDR. And it created this file right here, which has a better dynamic range from the highlights to the lows. So the first thing I did was I went through and addressed the whole overall image. Here on these sliders, I just brought the highlights down and I brought the shadows up, and the blacks up, just to get rid of that clipping. And I was more concerned about just this highlights in the back here. So I brought things to a point to where I was fairly happy with those highlights back there. Not only on that tree in the back, but up here in these cliffs. They're just, they're just slightly blown out, and by adjusting them down, it helps bring them more in. I went through and I, I brought the dehaze up a little bit. I like doing just, just trying to adjust the overall image right here. This isn't exactly what I did, but I'm just showing you for the sake of this. I bumped the saturation and the vibrance up just a little bit too. Now to get to the point of this. Point color can also be used inside of masks, in the masking area. So I created a mask. You can either do an oval mask or use the brush. And I'm going to use the brush here. And I want to lighten up just the certain colors in these trees right here. You know, and I could have done this with an oval mask. It's kind of all the same, but this gives me a little bit more control over where I want it to go. And I'm being a little sloppy here, but you're going to get the point. I'm going to turn off show the overlay so I can see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to come to point color and I'm going to click the eyedropper and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to select one of those very specific yellows. It's kind of an orange yellow. Now, if you look here, my sliders are sh are going to change the whole bandwidth of this. If I want to narrow it in, you just bring those sliders in. This is just the luminance, which is all I'm worried about. Now, I could do luminance shift, and it's just changing the luminance of that specific color that I selected. Now that doesn't look really good going that route in this instance. I kind of want it to bring in more of those around, but you get the point. I'm going to expand it back out a little bit so that it's picking up some of the surrounding color also. Did you notice what that did as I was adjusting that? Now if I set the luminance back to zero, see how that's just changing that? And it's making it look better. There's luminance way down, which you can see the mask. And if I bring it up, it really helps. It's just brightening up the exposure in that area using the mask and then using the point color. Then I went through and created another mask and did this side over here because I really kind of wanted to separate, help separate that tree. Go to that mask. Go down to point color for that mask. Select the color that you want. And then you can bring up the luminance just of that area within that mask. And I'm kind of doing this quick and dirty just to show you how I did this. But that's the basics of using point color. And I took that image from this to that. Which I think really, really helps make it look better. Something you need to understand is editing is kind of trial and error. Playing with it, adjusting it, sitting and waiting to see if you like it. So here's the original edit in Lightroom and then Photoshop. And then this is going back and readdressing it fully in Lightroom with using the masks and using point color to dial in the luminance of specific things that I wanted fixed. And then a little bit more of a tweak, and then the final edit. 
So I'm actually really happy with how that image turned out, far more than the original edit on it. Like I was saying, editing is about tweaking, adjusting, sitting on it, thinking about it. Do I like this? Going back and readdressing it if you need to. So I hope you enjoyed this about point color and my learning curve. If you're not learning and you're not advancing in your knowledge of photography, then you're not going to improve. It's just that simple. These guys that say, well, I know everything and I don't need to change anything. Sorry, man. I'm almost 60 years old and I'm always learning and I'm willing to learn. I'm willing to te have anybody teach me. Everybody knows more than I do. That's just the way it is. They might not know more about the huge big picture, but they know more about very specific things. That's okay. It's, there's always going to be somebody better than you, whether you're a guitarist, whether you're a photographer, doesn't matter. There's always going to be somebody better. And there's always going to be different viewpoints and perspectives. And learning to pick up those viewpoints and perspectives from other people and put it to use in your own life and your own work is really what makes artists better. So I have no problem with people pointing out to me that I could have done something different. I love this. I love that kind of input. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and happy trails.